Okay, so before we can jump into the code and start creating API calls, we have to go and download a few things first, which are gonna make our lives a lot easier. The first thing we need to download is the latest version of CodeIgniter, which today is version 3.0. So let's take care of that first. If you navigate your browser to codeigniter.com, you'll see a download link like this on the left. All you have to do is click that link and it will download a zip file containing the latest version of CodeIgniter. So there it goes. And let's go ahead and extract this to our desktop. You'll see that the download is about 7.81 megabytes in size. This is because CodeIgniter comes with a user guide, um, but because this user guide is uh, identical to the one that is available online, I usually just go ahead and delete it from my project because we already have it available online. So the next thing we need to get is the CodeIgniter REST server library. This library is gonna allow us to do a few things. First of all, it's gonna let us handle the different types of RESTful API requests, whether it be get, put, post, delete, etc., without us having to write our own code to do it. Secondly, it's gonna enable us to support multiple return types for our API. So if the caller of your API prefers working with, let's say, XML data instead of JSON data, your API is going to be able to return that format without you having to write a single line of code. Another cool feature of the library is that you can specify IP keys, or sorry, API keys or IP addresses to whitelist. This means that only people with a valid API key or whitelisted IP address will be able to call your API. So the Library has a lot of really cool features which we can use to build out our APIs. So to download the REST server library, simply do a Google search for CodeIgniter uh, REST server Phil Sturgeon. Phil Sturgeon was actually the original developer who created this library, but now it's been taken over by this gentleman, Chris, who, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce his name exactly, uh, but the library is really awesome, and it's going to make our lives a lot easier. So we're actually going to just go and visit this github.com account and just download all of the files that we are going to need. Uh, the most important is this restcontroller.php in the libraries directory. So let's copy all that code, and I'm just going to paste it into my editor here and save it as restcontroller.php to, uh, to my desktop. Just making sure I have the file name right here. And let's save this file to our desktop. The next file we're going to get is a file called rest.php in the config directory. This is going to be the config file for our API. So copy all this code, and let's also save this uh, to our desktop as well, rest.php. And the last of the files that we are going to need is the application libraries, again, format.php. And this file is going to allow us to specify multiple return formats for our API. So again, just copying this file and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay, so now that we have the core library files, you'll want to go ahead and download the Postman plugin for Chrome if you're not already using that to develop and test your APIs. If you're not familiar with this plugin, it's basically a tool which lets you test your API calls on the fly and it can really cut down the testing of your API by quite a bit. It's an absolutely fantastic plugin for our purposes here. So in order to get this plugin, you can just do a simple Google search for uh, Chrome Postman plugin, and you should see a link at the top to the Chrome web store. I'll show you uh, what it looks like here. Um, so let's show you some of the reviews that it's gotten. 
As you can see, it's gotten some pretty great reviews from basically everyone who's used it. So go, go ahead and grab it if you don't already have it. I actually have the plugin already installed. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like here. So launching my Postman plugin. And as you can see, uh, there's a spot where you can specify the API call which you are going to target, as well as the request method which you'd like to use, whether that be you know your get, put, post, or delete request methods. It's all there, and it even lets you specify these parameters over here. So uh, it's, it's great for testing your API calls on the fly. And the last thing we need to download are the api.php and .htaccess files, which I've provided along with this lesson. So I've gone ahead and just downloaded these files to my desktop ahead of time. Let me show you here. So here are my htaccess and api.php files. And that's great. So now that we have all of our files, setting everything up is as easy as dragging and dropping these files into our CodeIgniter project. So we have our five files, which we have gotten from both the internet and from the lesson. And let me show you how to go ahead and put these into your project. Okay. So here we go. As you can see, um, I've created a folder c slash var slash demos slash my api where i'm going to be putting all of the code for our examples if you want to go ahead and choose a different path that is perfectly fine as well but let's go ahead and just make sure we put everything into the right spot in our project so the first thing i'm going to do is just get the code igniter files and paste them all into our project like so. And next we are going into our application libraries directory and putting in our format.php and restcontroller.php files. And finally in the config, that's where rest.php goes. And then if we go to the root of our project, that is where the api.php file, sorry, in the controllers directory. And then finally, the root of our project is where we are going to put the htaccess file, which basically removes that ugly index.php from the uh, URLs of our project. Okay, so if we set everything up correctly, we should be able to just visit myapi.com and see the default CodeIgniter welcome message, which means that everything went okay. So that more or less takes care of the setup process for your API. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you the basics of setting up your very first API call.